Good evening, everyone. Welcome back to the Rapid Startup webinar. We are live. It's Tuesday. Lesson three this week, we're up to naming your thing, coming up with a name for your business, your new idea. We're also going to be talking about how to get legal uh, on this day three of day seven of the seven day startup. It's the Rapid Startup Meetup. My name is Nathan. We'll get underway in just a few minutes, waiting for a few others to come in. Nice to see you all. If you are watching us live, g'day, Paul. If you are watching us live, come say hi, just like Paul did over here on rapidexecutive.com forward slash live. We've got a little chat box set up there. You can come and say hi. Let us know where you're coming in from. Again, my name is Nathan. We'll get underway in just a few secs when we get everyone set up and into the webinar live. Tonight is a good lesson will uh, make make haste of the important stuff like <laughs> getting yourself legal getting yourself up to um up to speed on a real business going um going legit as i like to say uh, it's not as hard as you would think um obviously i'm not a, a legal advisor and definitely you need to get out there and get yourself some representation if you're going for something big g'day shane nice to see you again uh but well i'll show you how we uh, launched all of our businesses and how we got them up and running in under 60 minutes totally legal legit um, a real incorporated business uh, we're talking Aussie businesses so this is um, particularly pertinent for any Aussies that are getting their business up and running but we'll get as I said we'll get underway in just a few minutes we're also talking about how to name your name your biz so I've got a few things few resources to show you this week on uh, how to go about coming up with a name for your thing as I said, my name is Nathan. We'll get underway in just a sec. If you are watching us live, rapidexecutive.com forward slash live and grab the slides from tonight's presentation as well um, as a PDF. Just press a button there and it gives you all of them. And the if you are watching us on the replay, thanks for coming out. It's rapidexecutive.com forward slash replay for exactly the same info. Um, if you want to chat to us, jump on the chat box there. If you are watching on the replay, you can chat on the box down the bottom. It goes direct to me. If you have any questions, you can ask me in a little Facebook chat down the bottom there. All right, come back to me. Hi, everyone. Good evening. Happy Tuesday. Nice to see you. Out of focus, in focus. My name is Nathan. We will get underway in just a sec. I need to turn my phone off from beeping. <laughs> Sorry. I am, uh, as you, if you were here last week, you would know that I'm in the middle of launching something at the moment. Um, I'm on a webinar and playing with my phone. That's terrible. <laughs> that won't bug us anymore. Uh, so it has been hectic. It has been crazy. I am keen to share with you how that is all going as well. So that's pretty exciting. Uh, I did launch a seven-day startup at the turn of this year, which is awesome. Um, I'm very proud of it so far. Um, it's very exciting and I'm doing some uh, relaunching to get it to to the next levels as well. So uh, a few exciting things coming up with that. So I practice what I preach. This is the Rapid Startup Meetup. We meet every Tuesday online, every second Wednesday in person as well, if you're down here in Perth. Uh, if you are watching us online uh, from outside of Perth, you can absolutely watch us every Tuesday night. Um, we do have the replay available for a few days afterwards as well. So my name is Nathan. We've been running these for two years. There's over 1,600 now members in our meetup group, uh, which is awesome. Lots of people starting their things. I'm up to my fifth seven-day startup business that I've launched. Uh, several of them are still going very strong. Some of them uh, I've changed my I just got bored with. Uh, and that's because I didn't go through the ideation phase properly. Uh, I didn't fall in love with the idea at first. I just wanted to create something. So I went and created it, proved that I could do it, and I moved on. Um, and that's the beauty of this rapid startup model. You can get these things validated out the door um, and done really quickly. So we show you all the tools, tips, tricks uh, on how to actually create a business in 2017 and how to make it work, uh, how to validate it quickly, uh, if it's a dud, you'll find out straight away rather than spending thousands of dollars on legal advice and patents and uh, having it welled up in your head for years and years, distracting you from everything else you should be doing. So tonight is lesson three. Lesson three is uh, if we follow Dan Norris's seven-day startup, day three is the name your thing. So we'll cover a little bit on naming tonight. Also share some tools on how to go about the naming process. Um, I've got an awesome resource as well uh, that I recently came across 
um, by the Fizzle Guys, which is also on how to name your biz. It's a hilarious article as well. Uh, but it's got some really cool tricks and tips on how to come up with a name um, if you're really struggling with that part and how to come up with a name that actually fits uh, your biz. <clears throat> I've got some slides to share with you as well, so we'll, we'll jump over to those. Um, we'll step through the process. I'll show you the few tools and tips, but uh, after tonight's session, basically, you'll know exactly how to go about naming your thing and also how to get legal. So if you wanted to um, incorporate your business, if you actually want to go legit this side of the year uh, before the financial year is up, um, there's a few tools and um, tricks that you can use uh, get yourself um uh, get yourself actually created um into a business into a pty ltd or something like that uh, and actually a legitimate business so we'll cover that as well i'm off the go over to the sides if you're watching us live jump on the chat rapidexecutive.com forward slash live to have a chat it's nice to see you all uh coming in there and sharing what you're up to um saying hi and having a bit of fun so we run these sessions every tuesday night uh we do go through a lesson of the seven day startup process, uh, which I'll cover off in a few seconds exactly what that is. Uh, but just a quick rundown of what tonight's session is about. We're gonna cover off the three bits of starting a business. So everyone thinks it takes a lot of time. Uh, everyone thinks it's impossible to find a name these days because they're all taken. <laughs> and all of that cool, awesome, really fun stuff like banking and accounting, not really. Uh, but stick around till the end. I'm gonna give you an update on where I am on my new launch as well. And uh, we did do a we'll do, do a quick recap of last week's session as well. All of these sessions, if you are uh, wanting to follow along, you can uh, if you hover on the video that you're watching right now, if you're watching us live, uh, you can click on the little YouTube icon, subscribe, and it'll show you where all the other ones are as well. So WTF is an MVP was last week's session, or how to rapidly validate your idea. Here's a quick rundown of what the uh, the seven day startup model is and what we've uh, what we've replicated here in the rapid startup meetup group. So the seven day startup, as I said, was a book written by uh, Aussie entrepreneur, fellow Aussie entrepreneur Dan Norris. It's a fantastic book. I absolutely fell in love with it. Really a tactical guidebook for um, how to start a legitimate business a functioning business, especially in the services industry, because he did actually start a services business, uh, but a productized service. So it does map to a lot of different types of businesses. Uh, and he went through a seven day and a seven step process. And basically uh, to get out of your own way and stop procrastinating about all the bits and pieces, uh, stop reading info and consuming information about the best way to do this and the best tool for that. Um, and the latest thing for this, basically spend a day on each of these components in this order. And by day seven, you'll have something that you can launch. So ideation MVP or validation, uh, minimum viable product, minimum viable solution. Uh, day three, which is one we're up to at the moment is naming your thing. We expand on that to cover off uh, the all the legitimate side of things as well on how to actually start a business, how to get registered, um, all your accounting and business and banking and all that sort of stuff as well. Number four, the really popular one, build your site. Number five, marketing metrics and what you're actually measuring when you launch. And then day seven, the first day of your new business is the launch day. Now, if you have been here before, you would have heard several of my stories on how I've done this before many times. So these are my past um, seven day startup processes. So butter coffee, uh, is still an e-commerce business that I that was my first seven-day startup. After reading the book, I started the seven-day startup. My first one, uh, which was an e-commerce store uh, in the coffee niche, uh, that's still going very strong. We had an offer to buy earlier last year. We didn't take that offer. Um, still going strong, really enjoying that side of the business as well. That's a lot of fun. I've learned so much. It's crazy. We replicated that into a matcha tea business. That went really well. My latest is... Funnel Fix It, which I'll give you a little bit of a rundown on how that's been going as well towards the end. Uh, but we've used this model to create Amazon brands, launch books on Amazon, all sorts of stuff. So it definitely works. The first lesson was ideation. I put together uh, just as a summary of ideation, a list of the business models that I think uh, most businesses would fit into. If you're still stuck in that ideation phase, if you want to start again, if you're 
if you are got the entrepreneurial squirrel, <laughs> I need something new. What else is going to excite me? Uh, have a read through these real-world examples. They're really cool um, uh, case studies on business models that uh, are basically started from scratch or have become very famous on uh, really doubling down on one of these subtypes. Really cool. Uh, we worked out on um, the first session, is your idea any good? And the important part of starting with your why. We have a checklist on exactly how to get um, the most out of the ideation phase. Uh, this is from Dan Norris's book, so that's the nine step or nine elements of a bootstrap business. I won't go through all those this time. Uh, and the most important thing, and I usually start every single in-person session with this one as well, to some very strange looks from the newbies. If you have an idea, the most important thing, the best thing you can do is to talk about it. Uh, and a lot of people would think, oh, hang on, no, I need to keep it to myself. It's very secretive. Someone's going to steal my idea. Every idea that's out there has existed already. <laughs> if you don't believe me, jump on Product Hunt, have a look. Rapid validation number two, what is an MVP or the minimum viable product, minimum viable solution to your idea? What's the what's the least you can do possibly as quickly as possible to actually get your solution to someone's hands and have them tell you, hey, this is cool, I want this, or yeah, I don't really see the point <clears throat> because the sooner you find out, the better. And it'll work out whether your idea is any good. I gave you some additional validation examples as well. I am rushing through this, guys, because this is all from the previous session. So just a quick recap for anyone new here. Um, this was all on the day one. We're into day two now. Uh, some extra resources there. We did a case study on one of those as well. The most important thing from validation, if you can get people to pull out their wallet and pay you for your idea, you're onto something. <clears throat> We also did a breakdown of how to start a, um, a blog, and that's in the business archetype of thought leader, mediapreneur. Uh, we took something like a smart passive income and used a hot selling product, worked out exactly how many it's selling, um, and then looked at who is looking after the people who are selling this. So an extremely popular product, hundreds of thousands of units, if not millions of units now sold, the Amazon Echo obviously competing with the Google Home these days, but um, product of the year, uh, how to start a blog. And this was uh, way back when the Amazon Echo first came out. This guy had started a blog, um, basically had a few referral links on his, on his site, but no one else was serving this niche at all. Lots of buyers, no one with a blog and talking to people on how to actually use it, which is pretty cool. Um, so he made a lot of money putting up that. And we went through a bit of a business breakdown as well. So there are some tools if you are modeling someone else's success as well. There are plenty of tools where you can actually go and see exactly how they put their business together. You can uh, model that, create something similar yourself to get yourself an MVP in front of your customers. Um, so you can work out what they've built their website on, uh, what themes they're using, uh, find out where their traffic is coming from, what they're using for SEO and things like that as well. Very simple tools, um, all that in the previous sessions as well. Uh, we found out uh, with this particular one when we broke it down that um, you know a lot of their traffic was coming from search and lo and behold, it was because no one else had a blog. So if you've got a blog and it's the only one, you're going to get all the search traffic. Uh, you can, um, if you haven't got the ability to dominate someone with uh, organic, you can always look and see if they're actually uh, creating any advertising. And if they're not, and a golden opportunity exists for you to take what they're currently um, searching, ranking for in organic and pay for those organic terms, and you'll always be on top of them. All right, we've done a few experiments before. Um, this is a little bit of a recap again on traffic, uh, but this is the experiment to get um, a Facebook ad funnel together as well, which I run every single time I launch something new just to get some indication on what my customers want and what they'll resonate with. And you'll note that the cost for these sorts of things is extremely low. And I always say, if you're not keen to pay to play, you need to go home, try again. 
G'day, Luke. Nice to see you. I think it's uh, I think it's important um, to note one a little backstory from me on pay to play. I learned this the hard way. I tried to get away. I don't know what was in me to do this, but I tried to get away with creating a business. I actually made it a game to try and start and create a fully functioning, profitable business for free. <laughs> if I could find something that kind of did what I needed it to do and, and there was two or three options, if there was a free one, I would take it. Even if it didn't actually achieve what I wanted it to do, if I kind of did, I thought, oh, maybe I could hack it together. I could add this and that. it will be twice as hard. It'll take me three times as long. It won't quite get me there, but hey, I don't have to pay for it. That's a terrible way to, <laughs> to build a business. An example I have is MailChimp. I was using MailChimp for two years on the free plan because that gave us 2,000 subscribers. I only had about 300 subscribers at the time, so um, that's less than the paid model where you get to use all of the automation features. The first time I turned on automation, I wanted to try something um, uh, with the automation features. They had a 30-day free trial. I turned on the automation function, which meant I put my credit card in. I didn't actually pay for it. Uh, I sent out one email to my 300 person list and I made $600. So <laughs> that's my lesson on trying to start a business for free when for two years I didn't make a single cent out of all those subscribers until I went with the automation. <laughs> I paid and now I'm a very happy paying customer. All right, moving down to there's some more uh, details in the previous session as well. I'll just skip over these for you. Uh, you can go back and have a look at these as well. Um, the last bit I'll talk about on the uh, business breakdown session, the MVP, was how to get content for your business idea. And content absolutely is the fastest, um, cheapest way to get uh, um, the no like, and trust with your audience. You can go with paid. Um, it's it can be fast, but you it's harder to create a no like and trust with an ad uh, unless you've got some content on the back of it as well. Uh, so we looked at how to find content, good content already um, to reuse if you're not sure on how to use content. This same tool, which is buzzsumo.com, can give you ideas on the content headings, headlines. So what am I going to write about? Here's some ideas. What should I call these things? So these are extremely well performing. Um, headlines, these things are working well, so you can replicate um, uh, or model these headlines. I guarantee to give you um, um, a good turnout rate as well. And if you're just wanting to share great content with your audience already, then you can take ideas from here and share that out. So you're just curating that content as well. All right, let's get into tonight's session. As I said, if you want to have a look at all of the previous sessions, you can hover on the video and subscribe on YouTube. These replays are up for a few days, uh, but we need to refresh the system every week to get you this fresh new content out. We go through one of these uh, lessons every single week and we wrap back around after uh, the seventh one back to the start again. So if you are joining us in the middle, never mind, you can always uh, go back and watch the old ones uh, or come in where you are and catch up over time as well. So naming, it's impossible to find a name or a social media profile these days. I don't think that's true. Great business name won't save a bad business. So pick a name you can grow with. That's a quote from the guys over at Fizzle. Uh, if Again, if you've been here before, uh, you know that um, I came up my business upbringing. One of the biggest leap forwards that I had was getting a mentor. Uh, that mentor put me on to The Fizzle Show, which is a podcast. It's tremendous. It's hilarious. It's f packed full of tactical uh, business help, knowledge, um, really, really great stuff. Every Friday, they publish um, a new conversation. <laughs> and if you've listened to those guys, you know I've just quoted them on that as well. Uh, but The Fizzle Guy, I'm gonna, uh, a resource that I'm going to share with you this week from those guys as well. Um, something from Dan's book is every one of the top 25 brands in the world is 12 characters or less. So that's, that's a little stat on the, coming up with a name. 
Um, from a legal standpoint, coming up with the names as well, you can search for names on the incorporator.com.au site. Um, incorporator.com works as well. Uh, that is where you can also register um, your business, which we'll talk about shortly as well. You can go a bit more of a global search on the US Patent Office as well. Uh, and obviously, you trust your Google for a name search as well. Uh, you can look at websites for names. Uh, that's a good place to find names that are hidden, hiding um, as well. Uh, and just some thoughts on you.com, like branding yourself. If you are creating a business that you potentially want to have someone else run, if you want to outsource it or you potentially want to sell it uh, and cash in later, um, building a brand around yourself. So NathanShearer.com, um, who sells uh, widgets, and I want to sell the widget business off. Um, it's a little hard to sell NathanShearer.com to um, Craig Sampson down the road. So <laughs> uh, have a think about naming it yourself. If it is a personal brand build around you, obviously uh, you are the best uh, name for yourself um, around a personal brand. But if it's not a personal brand thing, um, then I advise maybe sticking away from something like that. A really, really awesome tool, simple tool. I've told you guys, a, a few of you before about this one. Uh, N-A-M-E-C-H-K.com, name check. This is a great way to, on a single page with a single word, find your name and see if it's actually been taken. And not just the domain name, um, not just some of the different types of domain names, your .coms, your .nets, your .co's, your .io's, your .orgs, that sort of stuff, but also all of the social profiles. So I recently ran um, a rapid startup through name check, um, to show um, you guys how it'll work. I said, look, rapid start, it was gone. .com, when I came, um, I went with .io because I wanted a, a very, very nerdy type thing. I want this to be a, a services model to to create your startup, a very a service, uh, a startup as a service type thing. Um, .io kind of fit, and it was cool, and it was not taken. I said, and, you know, you come down here, and, you know, I've got the, um, the Facebook profile and the Twitter profile, and I had the YouTube handle, and, um, oh, 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 <laughs> and I noticed that the Instagram profile wasn't taken. So I very quickly stopped what I was doing and went and registered the <laughs> Instagram profile before someone else did. Um, I guarantee that would be gone now if I had gone back even a couple of days later. So a very cool tool, all in one spot, type in the name of your thing or potentially names and you can check really quickly if these um, domains and social profiles are taken. So that's a good quick way of doing it. And obviously you can go a little bit more detail for the businessy side of things as well and actually check that um, the registration is there. If you're going to start an Aussie business, then the Australian Business Registrar um, has a search function. You can actually get to that search function, as I said, via incorporator.com, which I'll talk about in a sec. Uh, but the, the search within there is searching for actual registered business names. So your PTY LTD type business names. Um, my business is Rapid Executive, uh, Rapid Executive Pty Ltd. Uh, if I had, if there was something existing similar to that, um, then you can add another word, uh, change the word around, that sort of thing as well. Um, that's the business name, and then you can use trading as to do all your .dot coms and things like that as well. All right. So as I mentioned, I've added an extra resource into tonight's session: how to pick the ideal name. So if you're still struggling with the name. The guys over at fizzle.co have an excellent resource. I'm just going to give you a couple of uh, pieces from that um, article. It's called the How to Name Your Business article. The 10 name evaluation categories. And they go through appearance. So simply how does the name look as a visual stimulus? So what does it look like on a logo? What does it look like on an ad? If it's a really long name, if it's got um, something funky, they talk about fizzle having the double Z in the middle. That's something that you could be using to, to create some sort of creative around as well. Uh, how does it sound? How does it sound when it's heard? Uh, if you're saying your name on a podcast and you're saying it quickly and there might be some background noise, do people actually hear it and does it actually, res um, does it actually resonate with them uh, and stick with them as a word that's heard? I know when I say rapid startup, people get it. When I say rapid executive, a lot of people say, what, what, rapid who, what was the last bit? They kind of miss it. So executive is a really hard word um, when 
come join with something else. So uh, just something to bear in mind around sound. Distinctiveness. Um, again, if it's something memorable, um, but unique as well. So you um, aren't saying um, something similar that you would have heard somewhere else and people get you confused with something else. Um, and then you, they, <laughs> it's hard for them to find you another time. The next one is positioning. So how relevant is the name um, to the positioning of the product or company being named, the service offered or the industry served? How many relevant messages does the name actually map to? Next one is depth. So the layer upon layer of meaning and association. So is there any depth to the name? So the guys at Fizzle have Fizzle because um, on two layers or two meanings for the same sort of thing. They're, they're, they're guys trying to help people start up their business. Um, they see a lot of people who absolutely nail it and their business fizzles and pops and some fizzle out. <laughs> and that's how they use that. Uh, there's a few other ways um, to think about it from a depth. If, if your name is cool, if it's got a secondary meaning, if that meaning goes towards your culture or your, uh, your backstory and things like that as well. So that's what they mean by depth. Uh, six, I've got three more. So humanity, so a measure of a name's warmth or its humanness as opposed to names that are cold or clinical. Next one is energy, how vital and full of it life is the name. <laughs> it doesn't have a buzz. Um, can it carry a campaign on its shoulder? So that's another cool one as well. Um, magic and evocativeness is number eight. So the force of brand magic and the word of mouth buzz that your name generates. Now that's that's not gonna make, um, make or break your business. I think it's hard to get all of these in one. Um, and the last one is a bit of a boring one, trademark availability. Um, so the re <laughs> they call it the ugly meat hook reality <laughs> of trademark availability. And we mentioned before, you can go into the US patent office if you want to look at a global context um, from an Australian perspective. From the business name, you can just go into the Australian business registrar, which I'll cover off in a sec as well. So getting, as I said, getting legal to create an Aussie company incorporated.com.au uh, there is a link here that will take you there and get i think it gives you 10 bucks off or 50 bucks off or something um uh this is how i've started all my businesses i'm up to my fifth one i've helped other companies start their own businesses using this as well uh, it's an online form you fill it out it registers you with asic it registers you with the abn abr uh, the get you an Australian company name, all your incorporation documents, all the certificates, um, everything you need basically from <laughs> your home printer uh, and an internet connection and a credit card. So um, you'll be up and running in 60 minutes or so, depending on how structured you want your business. If you want to do share structures and corporate directors and administrators and all that sort of stuff, um, it walks you through exactly what you need to put in. Um, depending on how you want to structure your business. If it's really simple, literally less than 60 minutes, um, it'll tell you what to enter in all the fields. You keep pressing next, type in what they say, uh, enter your details, and boom. You'll have a heap of printouts of uh, some legal documents. You'll also get a, a beautiful certificate that you can frame and say, yay, I'm a business. As I said, I've used them several times. They're awesome. Uh, I have recently... Um, come across the need or the requirement in one of my businesses to actually incorporate in the US as well. I do a lot of um, transactions in US dollars. Uh, I have uh, lots of customers in the US. I'm having some cross-border transactional issues, which means if I have a lot of customers in the US, I should actually have a domiciled account in the US um, to make it a lot easier. So uh, just to give you a little bit more detail on what that actually means is if you have customers in the US, bear in mind it's the same in Australia. If you are based outside of Australia, a lot of our cards, a lot of our credit cards, even our credit cards here in Australia, especially if you're with the smaller banks, by default, they won't let you buy things even on the internet from a company that's domiciled overseas. So with the exception of things like Amazon, uh, um, things like uh, Netflix, things like that, um, a lot of these companies actually have localized domiciled accounts, which means their bank accounts are here, uh, and the um, credit card clearing agencies see that as being local. Um, 
if you're a Ma and Pa shop that have set up an e-commerce store with Stripe or PayPal overseas, um, PayPal doesn't usually have this much of an issue, but something like Stripe, um, where you're having a credit card merchant like Stripe sort this out for you, your credit card um, bank uh, can actually block those transactions uh, for you from a fraud, fraud prevention perspective. They'll say, hey, this is... Uh, why are you buying something from Denmark? You're in Australia. I'm going to block that. Um, and that's actually happening for me, for some of my US customers who are trying to buy things from my store, uh, or even some um, of my Funnel Fixit customers who are trying to buy a service from me online. Uh, because the account, my Stripe account, is in Australia, they're actually uh, blocking those transactions by default at the credit card holder. Um, because their credit card hasn't yet been told, um, i.e. they haven't rang their bank and said, I make some transactions overseas. Now, I found that very interesting in this day of the internet that we would have this cross-border thing, but anyway. Uh, so that's a bit of a, a boring backstory on um, some of the intricacies around payments, dollars. Uh, I found it very, very interesting. Um, because obviously if you go to all the trouble of setting up a business, finding customers, getting happy customers, coming through the door, getting their credit card out, paying you, and it fails. It's kind of the worst thing to <laughs> happen, especially if it's failing silently um, to you because uh, those sorts of things I don't actually see unless I go into the logs of my Stripe account. So I don't get informed um, of those sorts of failures because it's actually the customer's side. It's their, it's their side to fix up. But, um, you know, if, if you're, if you're on, a credit, on a, um, an e-commerce store and it said your card has been declined uh, and you know there's money there, um, I would say it's a problem with the store. I would think it's a problem with the store and I wouldn't buy there again. So... Obviously, as the owner of that store, I found that very annoying <laughs> and it's something I want to sort out. So all that to say, I am looking into starting a US company um, and Stripe Atlas is a service that um, the guys at Stripe have started uh, for around about $500. They will let you incorporate in Delaware a company. Um, they'll open you a US domiciled bank account with the Silicon Valley Bank. Uh, they'll accept payments. Um, they give you a whole uh, bunch of credits and um, transaction coverage and stuff. And they also give you tax and legal advice for that structure and company and set up and all that sort of stuff. If you wanted to um, circumvent that whole thing and you are doing um, um, uh, cross-border currency transactions, lots of them, things like that, uh, if you wanted to um, have your funds declared elsewhere and uh, obviously with a an accountant advising you on this sort of stuff, then you can actually look at online banks that offer different currencies um, and non um, non localized uh, bank accounts for you as well. So something like World First um, is another one that I'm looking into. Uh, it's got very low fees for transaction fees for um, currencies and stuff. So if you look at PayPal, so if someone pays you in your PayPal account, um, you'll pay several percentage points <laughs> of that money um, just in transaction fees. Uh, the exchange rates you get are terrible. Uh, I think for the last six months when the um, Aussie dollar has been hovering between 69 and 72 cents, um, I'm pretty much sitting at 68 cents in PayPal, um, even when it was up towards 72. So the 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 transaction fees plus the currency exchange can mean big chunks of your profit going uh, away. <laughs> uh, and things like World First have very, very, very low fees uh, because they literally do offer cross-border um, transactions. So they do a lot of currency transfers. Therefore, their currency exchange rate is very reasonable. Okay, the boring stuff. I really, really... I'm, I, I need to admit this publicly. I haven't done my tax from last year yet. It's February. I'm going to get shot. My accountant's screaming at me. Um, I hate all that stuff. I'm very, very terrible. Um, I have automated it. So my bazers get done. Um, my uh, quarterly statements and things like that get done because I've got it all automated in zero. I check in once a quarter with my bookkeeper who says, pay this. That's pretty much all I do. Uh, the hardest thing for me is this time of year when 
a month and a half ago, I should have had all my documentation um, printouts from my automated system uh, and some of the other things that the government sends you during the months uh, and sent that into my account and I still haven't done that. Very, very silly. Uh, but if I hadn't had it automated, I don't even think I'd get around to doing the quarterlies, which would get me in a lot of hot water. So I use zero for all my accounting. Um, basically, I feed in my PayPal feeds, I feed in my store uh, transactions, I feed in all my Stripe stuff, um, set up rules. Uh, my bookkeeper sets up rules, I should say. <laughs> and uh, once a quarter, all those transactions are reconciled, everything's done very, very easy. Um, I can also do invoices on the fly. I can send people transaction fees and all that sort of stuff. Um, really, really cool stuff. All right, we're getting on to the end of the session. We just a quick recap on the name it and get legal session. So we are day three. You can get legal in a single day. Um, obviously, getting some legal advice if you need it. Uh, but you can um, go and check out um, name check. Use uh, the Australian um, or US Patent Office for checking names. Incorporated.com.au is a great place to go and start your business and get yourself a, a PTY LTD. Um, if you are looking for an overseas bank account or overseas um, business, you can look at Stripe Atlas, which is a great way of doing it, which won't require you to actually fly overseas to start something up uh, or buy, an, <laughs> buy a, uh, um, a condo in Miami or something. Uh, and zero for all your accounting needs. <clears throat> all right, uh, for the last couple of weeks, I have not had the availability of my free coaching sessions. I have wound right back my, my coaching for the moment as I've been launching this new business. So I did promise that I'll give you an update on how that's going. So uh, in a few moments, I will go through all of the nuts and bolts. I'm hoping um, you guys are interested. Let me know in the comments that you want to hear how that's going. Uh... Shane says, what's the name of the system you use to track taxes? Was it zero? Yes, it is X-E-R-O, zero. Uh, so if you do want to grab um, some coaching with me, rapidstartup.io forward slash coaching, uh, and you can grab a session there or a simple way. If you are watching this live, you can use the big red button that says grab free 15-minute business strategy session. Uh, with me, it just gets me uh, straight into my uh, my diary. So as I've mentioned a few times before, guys, getting yourself a mentor or a business coach has had a huge impact on me. Uh, here's me with my one of my first business mentors, Brian Harris, uh, a very famous internet personality these days. Uh, this was back when he was just getting started, um, mentoring little old me. Uh, here I am in a, I was actually in a hotel in Brazil at the time. <laughs> uh, we were actually on the same time zone, so it made it a little easier. He was in the US. Um, uh, I was I was South America at the time on a business trip. But he used to mentor me uh, on a monthly basis to move my businesses forward. He helped me get my first business off the ground. He helped me take my zero to... Um, zero to sales in seven days my first rapid startup business which was butter coffee to zero to six figures in that first six months which was awesome so as you would know i offer business coaching and they do start around 397 per month for coaching and accountability calls uh, you do get access to me and all my closing coaching clients get access to me on personally on email as well uh, but tonight only for you guys watching i do offer a special package where you can get the coaching and accountability. I'll offer you uh, the website templates that I used to launch all of my businesses. Um, I can even give you an idea or website review. We'll go through exactly how uh, your idea is sitting. We'll go through everything we've been through tonight on validating your idea, getting you up to speed with what needs to happen before you launch, getting it um, through the ringer as such on if it's going to be a successful idea or not. Um, sometimes some hard truths on that as well. Uh, and we'll even go through a website review if you're getting that all up and launched. And if you want to grab that for only one ninety seven tonight, rapidstartup.io forward slash coaching. Pauses, definitely. Cool. 
All right, so let's come back to me. So that is naming your thing. Now, if you want to grab the article on naming your thing from the guys at Fizzle as well, rapidexecutive.com forward slash fizzle to jump over and see those guys. Let them know I sent you over. I love those guys. They're awesome. Their podcast is so amazing. They're hilarious and they're very, very smart. Um, it's a great article on, on naming your thing. If you are starting something up, naming can be uh, a big roadblock for people. Uh, I have heard that um, uh, for all you dads, mums and dads out there, it's uh, it can be like naming your first child, coming up with a good name, changing it several times. I actually had a session with a client Tuesday uh, who um, is a not-for-profit in the um, in the sort of safety HR space. Um, they had spent two years coming up with a new name. Uh, because of some confusion around their first one, two years, a business, highly functioning business, not for profit. Um, so they didn't have a lot of money, but they, they do need to function. They do need to, uh, to, to sort of turn money over, but they spent two years of that money <laughs> arguing, meeting, forming, deciding, undeciding, changing to come up with a name. Anyway, so. I hope that helps. I hope that was useful. Uh, if you haven't started your business, there are some great tools in there that will help you get started as well. Um, as I said, I've started five businesses and all I used was incorporator.com.au. Uh, if you are an Aussie, um, I'm moving into some more advanced things now, like having to get an overseas account. Uh, but we, I'm, what year is it? I'm six years into this business game um, for businesses that I've created and run myself. Uh, and only now I'm looking at some of that advanced stuff. All right, if you have any questions, guys, from tonight's session, jump in the chat box. I'm going to wrap this one up for this evening as we move into the Amazon session tonight. So we do run two webinars on a Tuesday night. Uh, this one, Rapid Startup, this is getting you from zero to launch in less than seven days. Uh, we meet every Tuesday night at 8 o'clock. Um, at nine o'clock, which is in 15 minutes, and I need to shut this one down so I can start the next one, is junglebooster.com forward slash live, where we talk all things Amazon FBA. So one of our business models in the rapid startup uh, business model matrix is the online retailer um, and e-commerce businesses. So uh, one of the best business models for that, either drop shipping or getting a bit more advanced with drop shipping, and that's private labeling. So if you haven't heard Amazon, FBA or fulfillment by Amazon, which is Amazon's delivery service and their physical products. They don't actually exist here in Australia. So amazon.com.au, if you go to there right now, type it in and type in stainless steel cookware, you won't get anything. You might get a book on stainless steel cookware. You might get a song about stainless steel cookware, but that's all. If you go to amazon.com, you'll get thousands of different types of pots and pans and trinkets from the kitchen and some weird things that people are paying for to get in front of those keywords. That's the difference between the two platforms. So amazon.com.au, no physical products, but that's changing this year. So there's an epic gold rush coming in this business model, uh, which is pretty cool. I've been selling on amazon.com for a couple of years now. Uh, and so if you if that type of thing interests you, then you can jump onto jungle booster, J-U-N-G-L-E booster.com forward slash live and come have a chat to us. We'll be there in about 15 minutes. Uh, but that is one of the other business models we talk about as well. So two webinars on a Tuesday night. Uh, every Wednesday, we meet up either the Rapid Startup meetup in person or the Amazon meetup in person in Perth. And every Tuesday night, both these webinars, back to back, lots of fun. So I hope that was helpful, guys. And let me know if you have any feedback on tonight's session. Next session, we, uh, we have the, the famous one. It's the website one. It's the one where we show you how to build a website, zero dollar website, uh, the five minute website, the 15 minute website, um, actually go through three or four of them in the 45 minute session that we have. Uh, everything I've used from, from WordPress. So what's the difference between these things and how we do that and what do we do for SEO and how do we launch and how do we do traffic and where do we do ads and what do we use to build and what I'm using all for everything these days to build my stuff. Um, so that's really cool. 
Uh, now, I did promise that I would give you an update. Last week, we did a watch me launch something, and I went to bed with this huge, great big plan to do a joint venture launch for my Funnel Fix It business. So funnelfixit.com was the um, unlimited ClickFunnels sales funnels service business that I launched in January. Uh, it's going really well. It's keeping me up late at night. It's, uh, it's pretty busy. Uh, I did try and eat the elephant, <laughs> but that's really cool. So um, I need to grow that business in stages. And some of those stages, uh, some of the cool ways to do that is actually with joint ventures. So grabbing other people who have audiences that might enjoy this and saying, hey, would you like to be involved here? One of my first JVs was with a, an advertising agency who offered to use me as a case study to launch their biz. And I was gearing that all up with a nice blog post and some um, what's called a content upgrade, which is also called e uh, e-marketing bait. So I was I put up a fantastic blog post, lots of uh, things that people could download in exchange for the email address, uh, and we put together a ad launch campaign. And I got all that ready. I showed you guys last week how it was going, and I pressed send on the email. I went to bed. When I got up in the morning, the joint venture partner has moved on to other things. So that was a little bit unfortunate. Bit of a fizzle up. For, for my launch session, but that's okay. I got up and went straight into the next one. So I have three of them coming. Thanks, Paul. Very informative and well presented as usual. Thank you. Uh, I have been doing this for a year now. So I'm celebrating this month. I think it's the 14th. That would be very cool. I'm gonna do something funky. I need to go and find out. Uh, I think it might be the 14th. If it's the 14th of February, 2016, that would mean I was very mean to my wife. So my first ever meetup online webinar was actually the 21st of Jan, which was a test. Uh, 23rd of Feb was the first ever. So next week will mark one year of doing a webinar a week, every week. I know I missed one, but that wasn't my fault. So running webinars for your business is a very simple way to grow your audience, a very easy way to connect with you guys. Here I am, what do you need? I can help you on the spot. Uh, but this is, next week will be the one year anniversary of us running one of these webinars every week. So anyway, where was I? Last thing, the next Funnel Fix It launch is actually happening tonight. Uh, why do I always pick Tuesdays? I don't know. Uh, <laughs> tomorrow is the meetup. So tomorrow, um, tomorrow night, Wednesday night, is this lesson again in person. So we've got a whole heap of people. I was late informing everyone of the session, which is naughty. We've only got about four people RSVP at the moment. So I'm hoping everyone RSVPs tomorrow. So that's what I get for telling people with 24 hours notice that we're having a meetup. Uh, but... Tomorrow I actually have the whole day to work on this launch. So I'm gonna do the launch tonight and use tomorrow to pick up all the pieces. <laughs> so when I wake up in the morning, I'm hoping uh, the business has exploded a little bit. So the launch I'm doing uh, with my second JV partner, because my first one ran away. Uh, similar thing, I'm gonna use all of the same stuff. So I created a really awesome blog post. I turned that blog post into an infographic to say, if you like this post, you can get it as a nice downloadable PDF. Just put your email address in here and I'll send it straight to you. Uh, and I've created a nice little simple video ad for that on Facebook. I've targeted my specific, very, very, very specific audience. Um, I'm going to launch to them. Uh, they are the extremely hot audience. There's about a thousand of them. I'm hoping to get 10% of those um, into the business at some point. That would be a really good conversion rate. I'm not I'm not expecting that overnight because that would kill me if that happened. Uh, I Literally, I'd run to Mexico. But uh, what I can do from there, once I've worked out that that converts, uh, I'm going to throw some legal, uh, some marketing mumbo jumbo at you guys, but um, think about this model and uh, I'm sure you could apply it to your business as well. So I'm taking um, a thousand warm leads. These are literally people who have shown interest in my business and I'm going to give them an offer and see that it converts. Now, converts means they purchase. 
if I can get some purchases out of that, I've proved that this is a compelling offer. And all I need to do is now create more of those warm leads. So Facebook gives us the ability to do that um, almost automatically by saying, can I have a lookalike audience of this? Now, it's not as simple as taking your audience and saying lookalike and saying, oh, 2%, that'll give me 2 million of these people. Uh, <laughs> I wish it worked that well. It doesn't work that well. Uh, Facebook will base it on the likes and associations, um, for want of a better term, demographics, on the people that are in that list. But if you give it a bit more detail and a bit more specificity, then you're more than likely to get uh, people that are close to that. Uh, and if the conversion rate is a tenth of it, but they've a hundred x the amount of people in there, uh, you're still on track to make the same sort of money. So that is my approach and my plan. Um, I will let you know. Uh, some of you will find out tomorrow how it went. <laughs> uh, the rest of you will have to wait till next week to see how that went. Um, but I, I'm very excited. I've got two more joint venture launches, and then we go into um, standard content marketing, um, which kind of makes I make it sound boring by doing it like that. But I'm actually looking forward to it. I really like this content. I like creating it. Uh, but I'm trying to get us into some step changes so I can step away from the day to day running of it. Uh, I need about 25 new customers to be able to um, justify two more staff members. Uh, once I do that, then I can literally stand right back from the business, which is great, and work on the content and growth uh, and then replicate. So we can go from two to 10 to 25 to 50 staff and things like that. And obviously, so helping hundreds of people then. So that's really cool. All right. That's me going like this lots of times. So <laughs> I hope that was useful, guys. Um, same bat time, same bat channel next week, uh, Tuesday at 8 p.m. Western Standard Time. Uh, rapidstartup.io forward slash coaching. If you'd like to have some time with me, you can find the same by clicking through the red button and grabbing a spot in my diary. Uh, rapidexecutive.com forward slash fizzle to go and see those guys and listen to some really cool podcasts. It's free. And uh, if you are in Perth tomorrow night, nine, uh, sorry, 6 p.m., uh, north of the river, we are meeting for the Rapid Startup Meetup group as well. Uh, and I think I think that's all I have for you tonight. I hope that was useful. And if you are interested in joining us in the next session in five minutes, junglebooster.com, jungle, like rawr, jungle, junglebooster.com forward slash live to jump on there. All right. Thanks, Shane. Thanks, guys. Thanks, Paul. Thanks, everyone. And I will see you next week.